So I recently purchased a uh, Tessel. This is a uh, microcontroller board, and it's kind of unique. Uh, it's different from the Arduino and some of the other ones because uh, on top of uh, running a JavaScript, as opposed to having to write all your firmware in uh, C, it also has plug-in modules. So if you can see right here, there's actually uh, four different uh, login ports. And then they have these set of pins here that you can also access uh, for, for doing stuff that you want to do outside of those ports. But the thing that's really nice about this is that they have all these modules and stuff that are created um, that uh, don't require you to do any soldering or uh, breadboarding. You can just take a module and plug it into the board and you're ready to go. In this case, I'm actually using the, uh, the climate module. And the climate module will give you uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit and, uh, and your relative humidity. So they have an example program, which is kind of nice, that will essentially in the console will show you what the uh, the current temperature and uh, and humidity is, but I thought it'd be a little bit nicer to see an example where you could uh, actually take, um, let's say, a website and push uh, the most current temperature to a website, and then using uh, socket I/O, you could uh, and uh, web sockets, you could broadcast whatever the temperature is in real time to a web browser. So what I've done is I've created a uh, website, and this website is called. Tessel temperature, and you can get to it by going to tesseltemp.azurewebsites.net. And um, I've also created a sample application. So if I come over here, I've included this in the uh, in the site source. Uh, I took and modified uh, the code they had for the climate module and for the. Uh, uh, they also have a Wi-Fi module where you can test uh, the HTTP GET. And I can kind of combine those two together to make a call out to the Tesla Temp website. And I have a um, uh, essentially a, a, just a small API where I can pass in the, the temperature and the humidity as variables uh, to a uh, to a URL. And then what will happen is once uh, the website receives that, it'll push that out to the client. So here, if I come back here to the website, you can see that I have these two table entries one for temperature, one for humidity, but right now it's not showing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that script that I just showed and I'm going to run that. So I went ahead and made a copy of the script here and uh, they give you a way with Tessel where you can actually kind of bundle up uh, uh, your code as if it were like a node site. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to npm install the climate module. And I just installed that. and if you take a look in here, I took a copy of that send temp and humid uh, JS file. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say tessel run send temp and humid. And hopefully that will start running here. And it looks like uh, it's not running. So let me see what I did wrong here. Okay, I think I see what I did wrong. I had a typo in the URL for my script, so I'm going to try running this again. And this time, I'll move this down here so we can see the table. And it's connecting, deploying the bundle, and voila, it's going ahead and it's updating the, uh, the temperature and the uh, humidity. One of the things I did in the, uh, the example here is that if uh, the temperature actually increases, then uh, I make it red, and if it's uh, being uh, reduced, then what I'll do is I'll make it uh, blue. So it gives you kind of a nice little animation there, lets you know whether or not the, the temperature is increasing or decreasing. And as you can see here from the command line, you can also see uh, that it's making those, uh, those updates here in real time. So I'm gonna leave this site up so other people, if they want to use it with their uh, with their climate module and test their climate module using this, uh, they can. I want to go over uh, some of the code here real quick just to let you know what I did. So I'm just using a standard Express site, and what I did was uh, 
in the site, I just basically set up a, a table here, and then I'm using Socket.io to receive updates from the TESOL. So whenever uh, we receive uh, an update, here is where I'm receiving that uh, get, it's expecting a temperature and humidity variable. Then what I do is I take that, uh, I set it to these, um, these parameters, and then I emit that out uh, to my socket. And then inside the, the site here, it just uh, looks for uh, to receive that uh, that socket. And once it receives that socket, I'll go ahead and I'll update the uh, the temperature using a little jQuery script I wrote here. So uh, I think uh, that's I thought it would be a good kind of first example or first idea of something you could do. Uh, it's pretty neat with the, with the tassel. This uh, board, I have to say, is uh, it's, it's pretty neat uh, in you know, two respects. One, that uh, you have these uh, plug-in modules that you, can, uh, that you can use, but the other thing that's also really neat about it is that it's Wi-Fi enabled. And the thing that's neat about this is it's got a uh, uh, ARM processor on it. It also has 32 megabytes of RAM and 32 uh, megabytes of uh, storage for, for your scripts. And... Uh, uh, runs off of 3.3 uh, volts, uh, so most of the modules are set up so that they run under 3.3 uh, volts. Um, so if you have uh, components and stuff that you want to kind of breadboard uh, to these additional pins here, that's something you'll have to take into account. But other than that, I'd say uh, the board is uh, it's pretty neat.